Statement of Cash Flows Problem 1. Pair Company uses the indirect method to prepare the Statement of Cash Flows. Pair's income statement is as follows. Sales revenue $251,000, interest revenue $2,600, gain on sale of assets $6,000, for total revenue and gains of $259,600. Cost of goods sold $123,000, salary expense $44,000, Depreciation expense $11,000, other operating expenses $23,000, interest expense $1,500, income tax expense $5,300 for total expenses of $207,800, giving us net income of $51,800. Additional info is as follows. Current assets other than cash increased by $20,000 and current liabilities decreased by $1,500. What is the net cash provided by used for operating activities? The first thing I want to note, there's a lot of information on this. Wow, right? We're overloaded with information. With a lot of accounting problems, it's important to note, just take your time. There might not be a lot of this that's actually important or useful in doing the calculation. We have to do the net cash provided by operating activities, focusing on a statement of cash flows. We're given an income statement and we're given some additional information. Now, we're told that they use the indirect method, so we're going to use that approach as well. Take a minute, stop the video, go through the information. Doing the statement of cash flows, especially the indirect method, that can be a long task. We're just asked again for operating activities. We're just focusing on the operating activities. So we have to remember what goes under operating activities versus what goes under investing activities versus what goes under financing activities. So current assets, current liabilities, the effects there, net income, as well as depreciation expense, gain on sale of assets, not all these items, they affect us. First thing we need to do, we have an income statement. Right here, the bottom of the income statement, we have net income. Let's go ahead, let's put that on there. Net income affects operating activities. So we have net income of 51000 $800. The first thing you want to do is find that net income since we have an income statement. Next thing, we're given the additional information for current assets and current liabilities. Now remember, there's an inverse relationship for current assets. Current assets, if they go up, that means that cash goes down. The way I like to think of it is you are purchasing these current assets with cash. So think about inventory. Inventory is a current asset. How do you acquire inventory? With cash. So we're told that current assets go up by $20,000. So that means that we're going to be decreasing cash by $20,000. Again, the way to visualize or think about it, you're taking, you're buying inventory with cash. So if current assets inventory goes up by $20,000, then the idea there is you pay $20,000 for that inventory. Current liabilities, we're told, go down by $1,500. Now, current liabilities, they have a direct relationship. When current liabilities go down, cash goes down. And the idea there is that if you are paying off your liabilities, right, then you have paid money to the bank. If you are borrowing money, which current liabilities will go up, then you're taking money out of the bank and you now have it. So the idea there is it's a direct relationship. So current liabilities of um, $1,500, they decrease, so cash decreases by $1,500. So we've taken care of net income. And the idea, net income, we've got that amount. You always go ahead on the indirect method, you pull out that net income. That's one of the first things that you bring out, the net income. We've gone through and we've done the current assets. And we go th we've already done the current liabilities. We've done that already. Moving through, right? Now, we need to go through and parse through the rest of this information. You got to be really careful. When you're doing the indirect method, you learn it a certain way. You take net income, but you also have to take a few other items. That includes depreciation expense. Let's find it right here, $11,000 depreciation expense. We need to add that depreciation expense. We always are going to increase by the amount of depreciation expense. That's always going to be added on. So we do depreciation expense. That is $11,000. So that gets added to. We've done that. Again, you got to be careful because we've already pulled out net income. So almost all these items have taken have been taken account and, and whatnot and what's going on. The only other items on the income statement other than net income and depreciation expense are any gains or losses 
on the sale of assets. Remember, we're just focusing on operating activities, investing activities, financing activities. Those could be affected by other things, but just operating activities. The only other thing from the income statement, because we're already taking into account net income, we've already taken into account depreciation expense, gains or losses on the sale of assets. Well, right here, we're told $6,000 gain on sale of assets. We need to put that into our mix. So gains and losses have inverse relationships when it comes to operating activities and the statement of cash flows. There are many ways to think about why this is. One thing is that I'm a tax person. Even though I do accounting, I do taxes as well. And gains create taxes. And you have to pay cash on taxes. So when you have a gain, your cash flow goes down because of the tax effect. When you have a loss, it creates a tax benefit. So your taxes go down. You have to pay less in taxes. So that's why there's an inverse relationship. We're told here we have a gain. So gain means that cash goes down by the amount of the gain because it's an inverse relationship. So we're going to decrease cash by $6,000. And that's really everything. Again, the additional information, the increase in current assets, current liabilities, of course, we take that into account, current assets, current liabilities. When it comes to the operating activities on the income statement, we pull out net income, we pull out depreciation expense, and we pull out any gains or losses. That's what we focus on. We now can calculate our net cash provided by operating activities. So the net cash for operating activities, we go through these items and we add and subtract. And when you calculate the numbers, you will find that the amount, the net amount equals $35,300.